Hey everyone, this week we're going to be looking at how you can edit your RAW photos for free using the Apple Photos application on your Mac. Okay, so the Photos application comes bundled standard with the Mac operating system. And obviously you have to buy a Mac <laughs> to get that. But essentially once you've got that, the software is free. And I've been using it for a few years now. I mainly use it for just organizing photos or creating little slideshows. You can also do things like create projects and prints and things like that. But what I didn't realize until quite recently is that it has some raw editing tools built into it. And the tools are quite hidden, which is probably why I didn't realize they were there. But once you find them, they are fairly powerful. And I wondered how they compared to Lightroom. So, this video is really just having a look at how you can edit raw photos with those tools built into the Photos app. And it's not really a how-to or a guide because I've not used the software extensively. But it's more of a overview or a first impression if you like. So let's take a look and see how it compares to Lightroom. So once you've opened up the Photos app, you can actually just drag and drop your raw file straight into your library like that. And this is the file I'm going to work on and it was several shots that have been stitched together into one raw file so that's why we've got this strange distorted look. Now the first thing to note is that the editing tools within photos are quite hidden. To get them you need to either go up to image and then show edit tools or you can press return on your keyboard and then you get these options down the right hand side here and along the top here we've got crop so that's the first thing I'm going to do. And this works as you would expect, quite similar to Lightroom. Just drag these edges in here. Bring that edge in a little bit more, I think actually, to about there. And you can rotate this if you want, but I don't need to do that. Once you're done, just go back to adjust and then we can start playing around with the exposure and color and things. So at the top here, we've got the light options, much like Lightroom. It does have an auto feature. However, I don't find it quite as good as the auto feature in Lightroom. What is good, however, is you've got this slider here at the top where you see the kind of previews of your image. And you can slide that either to the left or to the right and you see how it adjusts all the sliders below all at the same time. And this works a little bit like the dehaze slider, I think, in Lightroom. So it's not gonna give you the perfect solution straight away, I don't think, but it does just give you a quick way of setting a good base for your image. And I'm just gonna bring it up slightly to about there. But what I wanna do is just bring down those blacks a little bit I'll bring them up, in fact, because they're just a little bit too washed out. Maybe just bring down the brilliance slightly. I think that's not bad, though. Okay, so next we can have a look at colour. And again, we've got this slider here within the preview where you can go up or down and it will change the saturation and vibrance of the image. This one's not quite as useful as the light slider. But again, you can just get a good base. I might just bring down the saturation slightly. Obviously, same as Lightroom, you've got your saturation slider where you can really turn it up or down. Um, your vibrance, just the same as Lightroom, and then you've got this one which is cast. So that kind of just adds a colour cast to the image. But I'm not going to use any of those, I think uh, that's all I'm going to do with my colour for now. Then if you want to use black and white, you can take this here, obviously adjust your black and white levels. Uh, I'm not going black and white, so I'm going to untick that. Retouch, we'll come to that later. Now white balance, we've got down here. This is usually much higher up in Lightroom, but it works exactly the same way. We can either go cooler or warmer, and you do get some 
drop downs here which change how these sliders work so if you go for skin tone I presume that's optimized for when working with portraits or anything with skin tones basically and then with the temperature tint one it's a bit more like Lightroom so you've got the temperature slider and then also the tint slider underneath but I quite like just using the neutral grey which is the default option and I want this to look, to look quite cool, I want the background to look quite blue so I'm going to bring that down now curves I don't really use these much for the images that I take but if you do like working with curves it works very much the same way as Lightroom so you can get creative with those, putting your points in I'm just going to untick that because I don't want to use it and the same with levels as well so it just gives you options on how you want to work with the exposure and tone in your image definition is an interesting one uh, it works a little bit like clarity in Lightroom so you can bring that up to add more clarity or definition the interesting thing is though you can't go down with this so in Lightroom you can bring the clarity down to minimum levels or minus levels rather and that will soften your image and give you that kind of painterly feel with this you can't, you've just got a, whatever the image is to start with and then you can go above that and get more definition but I would quite like to have minus definition selective colour is a nice one um, it allows you to kind of get a little bit of a split tone effect not quite but a little bit so I'm going to just select the eyedropper here maybe select this green and then I can change the hue on that so maybe that wasn't quite the right green to choose maybe I'll go for that one there maybe I'll just bring my um, white balance up slightly yeah that's getting more like I want it so I want to adjust this to look I did actually take this in autumn but it looks quite green when it's natural because um, it was quite green um, I, I'm not really sure why the uh, the leaves did stay quite green that year for some reason even into November but um, yeah if I bring the white balance up to be a little bit warmer with the selective colour edits that I've made that starts to give me some really nice orange tones in the leaves so it makes it a little bit more autumny and we can play with the saturation of that as well I don't want to go too high maybe to about there luminance obviously we'll make it lighter or darker I think it's okay around about there and then the range is just how much it kind of affects that colour so I don't want it to affect it quite a bit so I'm going to bring that up noise reduction this is one of the tools that doesn't really work as well as it does in Lightroom this image is not too bad for noise um, but if we zoom in do see that here on the trunks and branches of the tree we can see some colour noise in there and by default Lightroom will get rid of the colour noise and does a really good job of it in, in this program unfortunately it hasn't got rid of that noise you can't really see it from a distance but it is a little bit annoying when you zoom in and you can't get rid of that you can bring up the noise reduction and it will get rid of it a little bit but it's mainly luminance noise it's getting rid of rather than the chroma and it also really softens the image so I mean I don't mind that too much for this image but if you wanted it to look crisp and sharp um, and also reduce the noise you're going to have trouble I think but you can sharpen it, we've got the tools below here to sharpen so you can bring up the intensity and you can try and bring some of that sharpness back edges works a little bit like radius in Lightroom I think I'm not 100% sure about fall off doesn't seem to do a great deal on this image but to be honest I don't want to sharpen this image I'm quite happy to leave this fairly soft and by the way if you want to zoom in and out you can use this little slider at the top here and if you want to see what your image was like before you started editing you've got this little button here you can toggle that on and off just to have a look and finally at the bottom here we've got vignette so 
If you've watched any of my videos before, you'll probably know that I really like vignettes. I'm a big fan of vignettes, so I'm going to put quite a heavy vignette on there. You can change the radius of it. It's quite nice with quite a big, big vignette. And then the softness will just be how feathered it is, basically. Maybe just turn down the strength a little bit. Okay. And when you're happy with your edits, just go up to the top right and click done. And there we go. So what I want to do now is just bring in a second image. I've got this bird here. And I just want to talk about the retouch tool. So if we just zoom in, just down here, you'll see we've got a bit of a nasty blemish, a bit of dust on the sensor, I think. So I could probably just emphasize that slightly by tweaking the contrast and maybe the definition. And just be clear, I, uh, I wouldn't edit the image like this. I'm just trying to emphasize those blemishes so that we can focus on them while we're trying to remove them. And what I want to show you is that the retouch tool is not particularly good, unfortunately. If we select the tool here, we've got a little brush we can click on and it works a little bit like Lightroom. You just paint over the blemish and then it will automatically analyze another part of the image to cover that up. But if you see, it doesn't do a very good job. It looks pretty bad to be honest. And if I were using the Photos app to edit my RAWs, I probably wouldn't use it to remove dust and blemishes. I think I'd have to get a, another piece of software to remove those. So there you go, that's the Apple Photos app for editing RAW files. All in all, it's not a bad app at all. I did miss a few things compared to using Lightroom. For example, I would like negative options for things like clarity or definition as they call it. The noise reduction tool is not particularly good. There was some significant color noise in the image even after turning the noise reduction up. Uh, the retouch tool is just not great, at least not in the images that I worked with, it just didn't work at all. And there are no selective editing tools, so you know you can't just select one part of your image to work on and edit that, at least not as far as I'm aware. <laughs> if you've got anything wrong in this video, please let us know down in the comments, because like I said before, I've only had a really quick first impression looking at this, but as far as I know, there are no selective editing tools. But having said all that, it is a pretty good piece of software considering you get it pretty much for free. When you compare that to the something like £30,000 <laughs> you have to pay to Adobe every month, it's not quite that much, but it's uh, significantly more than getting a free piece of software which is bundled with your operating system. So I probably won't use this in the future just because I need all the Adobe package for editing my videos and things, and I'll be using Lightroom, but you know, if you are the type of person who doesn't want to spend big bucks on loads of fancy software, this will do a really good job. If you've got a Mac, you know, you can get some good results with your raw files using this. So if that is you and you found this video useful, then please give me a thumbs up down there. And if you're not already subscribed, then please consider doing so. As always, you can click down here on the big red button or on my face over here. And that way you'll keep up to date with everything I'm doing each and every week. And there's a new video every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. UK time. So that's it for this one. Until next week, thanks a lot everyone and bye for now.